Hello everyone, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to Kadawa Shoujo. I really don't remember what happened in the last episode. However, I was apparently mispronouncing something that made me quite embarrassed, especially when I read these two comments here. And I'm definitely down for this sort of uh, criticism in this playthrough. If I'm mispronouncing something, please, for the love of God, tell me. Even if it embarrasses the shit out of me, this, this hurts. Like... Yes, it, it's it's a it's a necessary pain, I should say. So it's Prussia, not Prussia. I'm very sorry for. Uh, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm just I'm sorry. There's no excuse. I'm just an idiot. If you want to take that as an excuse, or not. But speaking of comments, I got a comment a few episodes ago that I never looked at. Uh, it was from why are you like this they said there's a reason I said Rin is my favorite girl in this game Apparently they said this earlier Because if we're talking best character that's obviously got to go to Kenji and you put an XD I Should just I should just end this playthrough now. I'm I I, I don't know where I can go from here, but yeah, I mean <laughs> So far, having a lot of fun, and um, I think last time we were actually helping out uh, both Emmy and Rin with their, uh, with whatever. I guess for the festival. Today's the festival, actually. I uh, totally forgot. And I'm not really sure about this music. It's, uh, it's nice. It's like all the other songs, or most of the other songs have been, but this one's got a, a little bit of a mixed mood. So here we go. The next day, I wake up feeling a little lightheaded. It's almost noon already. It's like whenever I wake up. Sleeping late is fine since it's a Sunday and there are no classes. Not just a Sunday though, but the festival as well. From my window, I can already see some people at the soda booth slinging noodles onto plates for people with a craving for low quality food. That's soba, by the way, my bad. I throw back a handful of my morning meds and ponder how to spend the day. There will be a few exams in the coming week, but I don't consider those as ominous as others, so I'm not as worried about them as I probably should be. With no urgent obligations regarding education, I should be free to spend the day at the festival as I like. Finishing my morning routine, I exit into the hallway, intending to go out and find something to eat. Passing by his door, I decide to see what Kenji's up to today out of impulse. That's a terrible impulse. I'm curious if he has any plans since everyone is doing something. And then again, I can picture him having built a, so a soundproof shelter in his room. Or possibly something like a fort, complete with a uh, no girls allowed sign. And with the girls crossed out and body crudely scrawled underneath it. <sighs> knocking on his door, with which is luckily devoid of any kind of sign, I hear again the unsettling clicking of at least ten locks being pulled back. The door opens up a crack. Who is it? You're supposed to ask that before you open the door. Oh, it's you. Damn, it's early. It's not really that early. What is it, man? Nothing. I was just going to ask what you're going to do today. And, uh, where's my money? Half the school is out there already. Out where? Why? What? 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 Is today special? Why are they there? Who are... I can hear them. It's loud. Don't tell me. Has the invasion begun? He suddenly looks more alarmed. What day is it, man? Yeah, I guess you can't see the big wooden booths outside and people selling stuff. What the hell are you talking about? I have my curtains closed at all times to thwart the snipers. Uh, it's the festival. You know that, right? Oh shit, that's it, eh? Ah, damn. Ah, damn. Damn it! I can't believe I forgot. I don't have my fort finished yet. This is bad. This is going to be a very bad day. It's good you told me this, man. This is going to be a bad day. Why? Oh man, they're gonna be everywhere. The people outside my window, socializing. Kenji rubs his temples nervously, suddenly looking very ill. It's gonna be loud as, as hell. Damn, and I was gonna go out today. And now it's ruined, everything is ruined. This is awful, this sucks, this sucks. 
What the hell? This really sucks. I can't go anywhere. There's nowhere to run. Kenji seems nervous. You could even say he's majorly freaking out. I can't believe this. So that's what today was. Damn. And I couldn't even prepare for it. I couldn't even brace myself, and now it's here, and I can't do anything. You should have told me this earlier, dude. I mean, at least I know, but I could have known earlier. Imagine what I could have accomplished. Sorry, I thought you knew. So I guess you're not going to do anything today. The weather is even good. Yesterday was really windy, so I thought today would be cold. It's not, though, so there's no reason to just stay inside. You should check the festival out. Kenji groans and covers his face with his hands. Ah, no, 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 no. I can't do it. They'll eat me alive out there. I know it. That has to be a joke. But he said it with such a straight face. Relatively straight. What are you going to do? We should hang out in here. And you can help me build my fort. We might still make it if we work together. I wonder. I'm kind of hungry. But I made this deal that I try to take better care of myself. Be healthier, you know. Don't know if I should steer clear of the takoyaki or head straight in. Deal? Sounds ominous. So, what are you getting in return? Nothing, I guess. It's not that kind of deal. You know, Emmy from our year? We kind of agreed to watch each other's backs and... I really don't know what sort of noise I'm supposed to be making right there. The shrill scream and the expression of abject terror in Kenji's face chill my blood. It's as if I told a Catholic priest I sold my soul to the devil. Her? You sold your soul to the devil and didn't get anything in return? What the hell is wrong with you, man? Do you even know who you're dealing with? She's a public health danger. Do you know how many people she sent to the hospital monthly with her carefully paced or placed flying tackles? tackles? What am I even saying anymore? She's one of them! A key player in the vast conspiracy that aims for the complete submission of everything that is manly. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I trusted in your judgment, man. I thought we were brothers. You have to call it off before it's too late. This festival, too. It's just one of their ploys. He fingers his scarf nervously, faster and faster like he's trying to start a fire, then slowly begins to calm down once the panic attack finishes running its course. I'm going to have to find some place to hide in. A safe haven. And then knock the lights out of myself so that I don't have to experience this horrible day. I have the perfect thing for that. I must prepare now. Don't go to the festival. Okay. Later, dude. The door slowly closes with a low creak, and I don't know how to feel about what Kenji just said. It's kind of unsettling, and now I start to feel doubtful myself. Should I bother going? I've got a book I've been meaning to read. Something about an underground postal system that may or may not exist. It's short, too. I could have it finished in a day. But what? But would that be a good way to spend my time? Well, yeah, it definitely would be. But I suppose that it would be better, or it would probably be a better idea to head outside. See the festival. Try to integrate with all the other sideshow acts. Honestly... I should at least make an attempt to keep up the somewhat friendly personality I've had the past week. Maybe get something to eat, my stomach suggests. It's almost lunchtime. I could at least grab something from one of the stalls outside. Oh boy, it's as busy as it was the previous day. I'm soon outside, surrounded by various students and people who may or may not be their parents. Every so often, I catch a glimpse of someone who clearly just came up from town for the promise of a festival. They're easy to spot. The ones who can't stop staring. And behind their eyes, you can tell they're thinking, Now what's wrong with this one? I almost want to, want to yell at them. But at the same time, can I deny that I've been doing the same thing all week? I mean, I have. A wave of something like disgust sweeps over me. Guilt from my own narrow-mindedness. Oh shit, this, this looks hella lit right here. I push the thoughts aside, concentrating on the pangs of hunger that burn my guts like a wildfire. The scent of something fried leads me to the promised land, where I can get some lunch. I'm just getting my order when a loud voice interrupts me. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Having break? Er, lunch? Er, I, yeah, I, that just hit me. He was trying to say breakfast, so. Breakfast? You mean you just got up? 
Uh, suddenly sleeping all morning feels like a crime. No, I meant lunch. Honest. She's not buying it. Brunch? That's not a healthy breakfast at all. She snatches my food out of my hand and glares at me. What the hell is this girl doing? Yeah, that's my breakfast. What happened to it being your lunch? That's my... Whatever, it's food. Hemi places her hands on her hips and begins lecturing me. Did you really forget your dietary plan already? You need to be more conscious conscious about your health, Hisao. What about your heart? My heart's fine the way it is. Mostly. All I get in response is a roll of the eyes. I doubt that. You wouldn't be here if that was the case, would you? That girl's got a point, of course. But I'm not about to concede it. It's not that bad of a heart. Certainly, it can handle a little grease now and again. Yeah, sure, and it handled a little running just fine, too. I mean, we're, we're alive, so there's that. Emmy seems unconvinced. Not surprising, as I haven't even managed to convince myself. Maybe, but not if you're sleeping the day away all the time. A devious look suddenly crosses her face. Of course, if you'd been following a routine from the beginning, you wouldn't be in this situation. Hey, I've had a pretty eventful week, you know. For example, I almost died, and there was a lot of meeting people, and then I was on a roof for a while. Which is no excuse for slacking off, you know. A little near-death experience is no excuse for skipping basic exercise. Like running in the mornings. She nods as if something important has just been decided. So it's been settled then. You've seen the error of your ways and are willing to adhere to my routine, right? I'll see you bright and early in the morning. We'll be running, buddies? You know, you'd already convinced me yesterday that this was a good idea. You don't need to convince me again. Not that I did a good job of being convinced. She's right about eating healthy, after all. And here I am ordering up something grossly unhealthy. But delicious. There are more important things than deliciousness, aren't there? Nah, life is not important. It's all about getting the greasiest food. The fastest food. The fattest food. Like staying alive. If Emmy weren't here uh, bro-beating me for my poor decisions, I'd probably... Hey, wait a second. A sudden question springs to my mind. Hey, why the hell have you taken such an interest in my well-being? Emmy shrugs and grins at me. You're the new guy. I figure you don't have any friends yet, right? Besides, I've caused you trouble all week, right? I owe you for not getting angry. And I told the nurse I would anyway. Uh-huh... Crazy little running girl wants to make me healthy. Well, I suppose there are worse fates. Okay, that sounds fine. Thanks for your concern. Tomorrow morning, then? I figured that ends the conversation, so I turn to leave. Not so fast. I feel a hand on my collar, and in a second I've been yanked backwards. Hey, no need to be so rough. What do you want now? Emmy looks almost wounded by my annoyed question. Thought you could use the company. Her eyes narrow. Besides, you were just going to try sticking some more of that fried crap, weren't you? Well, I wasn't going to. But now that she mentions it, that would have been a really good idea. I was not. Another glare. Okay, maybe I was going to get a little. The glare continues. Okay, a lot. Jesus, I'm a, I'm a danger to myself and others, aren't I? I get done agreeing that I need to be healthier and then immediately start considering the next unhealthy habit that comes my way. I knew it. You can't be trusted. Now I definitely have to stick with you. This whole situation feels silly. I can only imagine what passer passers-by think of the sight of me being lectured by a tiny girl half my size. She is short. I forgot about that. <laughs> Maybe I should just give up for now. Fine, do what you like. I sigh. Might as well make the best of this. What do you want to do? Let me thinks for a minute. Well, I promised Rena I'd stop by her mural, so let's do that. I confess I'm slightly curious as to how her mural turned out her myself, so again, I consider there are worse fates. I give a nod of assent and find myself almost dragged bodily through the crowd as Emmy races to our destination. Oh, shit. This looks crazy. By the time we reach the dorms, I can feel my heart pounding. My heart shouldn't be pounding after just that. I take a few deep breaths, willing to or willing myself to calm down. 
I'm one of the most normal looking people in the school, but I still have to be here. Sometimes I almost wish I'd lost a hand or something. At least then I'd, it'd be obvious that I belong. But instead, I don't even look sick. Even now, trying to catch my breath, I just look out of shape. Emmy looks back and notices my state of distress. You're not going to die on me, are you? Please don't. It'll be all my fault, and I don't want to deal with that kind of guilt. I, I can't tell if she's just if she's really caring or really selfish. <laughs> I guess none are too bad. Besides, after the last time, I really don't think I need to see that again, especially because the nurse will totally say it's all my fault. Ugh. Ugh, I'm fine. Guess I need to start running after all. And you wanted to keep eating your greasy whatever it was. See, it's a good thing I found you, right? Yes, it was. Maybe. Of course, I don't add that I wouldn't be in this state if she hadn't dragged me across the festival grounds. Further conversation is interrupted by the sudden appearance of Rin. Oh, it's you. Hello, Emmy. Hey, Rin. I brought his sow along because he was going to give himself a heart attack. I was not. My objection goes unnoticed. We stopped by to see how the mural turned out. Rin nods slowly. Well, it's right there. You can see it pretty clearly. I find myself wondering how long Rin's been standing here in front of the mural. Has anyone even stopped by to look at it? Are we the first ones? Obviously, we're not the first to see it, of course. I mean, it's pretty big. You'd be hard-pressed not to see it. At the same time, I don't think anyone's actually talked to Rin about it. Anyone but us, that is. I feel compelled to say something. It looks pretty good. I'm still not happy with how it turned out. But I guess it'll do. She seems almost resigned to it. I'm not sure what she expected as a result, but I guess she didn't quite get there. Oh damn, we're gonna, we're gonna get a nice close-up of it. I mean... I don't really know what it's supposed to symbolize. It doesn't look like anything neat, but it looks fancy. We stand in front of the mural, taking it all in. I try my best to concentrate on the composition of the thing. It's actually fairly interesting. The colors swoop and blend together, dragging me along with them. There's a dreamlike quantity or quality to the whole thing that makes me almost feel sleepy. I try hunting out some of the colors Emmy and I grab for her. Try as I might, I can't see any, here we go, Prussian blue. I got it, guys. I got it. Hey, look what looks like a nipple. Oh, well. I Oh, oh those are nipples. I <laughs> Those are titties. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Remember, guys, that's okay if, there's, if that's used artistically. So I don't have to censor that out. I am totally fine. That was artistic, artistic cleavage, artistic tits. So it's all right. I should have just said breasts. I don't know why I keep on bringing in terrible terms. My feet start to hurt, but Rin doesn't seem inclined to move. Emmy speaks up. Hey, Rin, have you eaten? Of course, you can't survive otherwise. What about in the past five hours? Maybe, but I'm hungry again, so maybe that means I'm wrong. Emmy grins and claps her hands together. Good, come get some food with us. Rin nods in assent. Okay, but we should hurry before they notice I'm gone. Somehow I don't think they'd care, whoever they are. And to the food we go! As we head back to the food stalls, I cast a longing eye over the fried food. No, I'd better not. I'm pretty sure Emmy wouldn't let me anyway. We find a nice spot on the grass and sit down to eat our purchases. Well, my purchases anyway. Somehow I've wound up paying for all the food. Surprisingly, my unfried food is pretty good. Silence falls as Emmy and I eat and Rin stares at something or other, occasionally eating a bite or two of her food. I finish my meal first and lay back on the grass. Emmy glances up from her food. Tired, Hisao? A little, I guess. Well, don't oversleep or anything tomorrow morning. We start our morning runs, remember? Actually, they'd slip my mind. 
I was actually just enjoying myself. Wandering around the festival with these two has actually been fun. Yeah, I'll set an alarm. You'd better be there. I'll get angry if you aren't. God forbid. I don't think God comes into it. Unless there's some kind of freak accident and your alarm clock shorts out. That might be a random act of God. Well, don't cause any random acts of God, then. A plan forms itself in my mind. It's a plan that makes me feel kind of guilty, but I throw it into execution anyway. Damn it. I've earned a little fried food. And anyway, I'm going to start running tomorrow, right? So the actual routine all starts then, not now. Ergo, the dietary portion starts tomorrow, too. Ergo, I can have something unhealthy today. It's not a final farewell to all the stuff I used to eat with wild abandon before the hospital. Actually, I suppose I should head back to my room. I had some homework to do, and if I'm going to run in the morning, I should make it an early night. Those narrowed eyes again. You sure you're not just sneaking off to buy some of that fried stuff over there? Nah, I'm too full to bother now. I pat my stomach for emphasis. Besides, you two have cleaned me out anyway. Emmy giggles. It's a surprisingly pleasant sound. Another pang of guilt. She's got to know that I'm lying to her, doesn't she? Or is she just that trusting? I kind of feel like a monster. All part of my master plan, Hisao. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow morning, then. Thanks for the food, and for keeping us company. And here I thought she was doing me a favor. Rin nods in agreement. I won't say see you tomorrow, because that would be like predicting the future. And I'm pretty sure I can't do that. Hmm. Okay. Bye, you two. I feel oddly glad that I decided to leave my room today. Not a bad way to start my second week here, I suppose. Once I'm sure I'm out of Emmy's line of sight, I make a beeline for the food stands and buy some cake. At least, it's not fried, right? That's slightly better than what I was planning to do. I still feel a little bad about lying to Emmy, though. She really does seem concerned about my health. I'll make it up to her somehow. Better head back to my room. Hey, I do have work to do. <laughs> Alright. My book waits for me, and I flop onto my bed and read through the fireworks display. And now it's suddenly nighttime. Eventually, all the walking around, or more accurately running around, catches up with me. I really am out of shape. And me dragging me out in the morning to run might just be a good thing after all. It's something to look forward to. Oh. Oh, shit. We get a little animation here. Damn, dude. Wow, we... We look... Oh, my garbage. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh. There we went. Oh, shit. Man, this... Oh, oh, oh! Fuck, dude. Man, this is... This is just... This is so peaceful. Damn, dude. Act to form. Well, alright. Sounds like a fucking plan. So, um, I, I already figured, honestly, that we were going into Emmy's route. I guess when I made the decision, uh, to, you know, go for it, to, like, go fast as fuck, and to push ourselves when we were running, which then ended up in us having heart issues, uh, I guess that put us on track to Emmy's route. Because I noticed that we weren't interacting with anyone else after that. It was pretty much just Emmy and Rin, but we never really did anything with Rin beforehand. It was pretty much just interaction with Emmy. Uh, and now here we are. I guess, I guess we're on a route. <laughs> Whether that be a good thing or a bad thing. But I'm, now I want to know, was this the commonly chosen route? Or the route that blind playthroughs uh, usually get to? 
I, w I would like to know. I was kind of curious all, all, all this time. All this time, but I feel like now is the proper time to ask. My alarm's beeping shatters the early morning quiet, and I find myself wondering whether to find the motivation to rise. I mean, we kind of have to. Class is still quite a bit off, but I agreed to run with Emmy in the mornings. Really, I'm not that interested in running as a hobby, or even as a possible life-lengthening exercise. However, I feel obligated to follow through on my promise to Emmy yesterday, which is why I find myself throwing on some running shorts and a light t-shirt. Very, uh, short shorts, apparently. Which are really good for running, in all honesty. I, I had to wear some when I was doing cross-country. It's, it's terrible when you get those wedgies, but... It is what it is. The cool morning air caresses my face as the morning sunshine causes the dew on the grass to sparkle, nearly blinding me at first. As I make my way down to the track, an ugly thought strikes me. What if this is some sort of joke that Emmy's playing on me? Would that surprise me, really? Hell, I'd probably do it to the new guy, too. At the very least, I'm sure Emmy and Rin made a bet on whether or not I'd actually show up. <laughs> but we are. I feel a sense of trepidation as the track comes into view. You're late. It would seem that Emmy is already here, or there. What a relief. Not according to my watch. We both are early, in fact. Damn, you got me there. Emmy is sitting on the bleachers, decked out in her running gear, waiting somewhat patiently for me. I'm glad you're actually here. I was afraid that this was a joke or something. Nah, I'd never make someone get up early for nothing. Plus, Rina owes me 500 yen now. She didn't think you'd actually show up. <laughs> wow. We were right. <laughs> I knew it. Nice to know Emmy was on my side, at least. Emmy hops off the bleachers and begins stretching out. She's remarkably lithe, almost like a dancer. I set out to stretch as well, but then realized that I don't exactly remember how to stretch properly. It's been ages since I stretched for anything, if you don't count my one stint at running last week. And even then, I don't think I actually stretched beforehand. The specter of my long hospital stay rises up again. I can't say I was all that active before the hospital stay, though, so maybe I'm just being morose? Emmy giggles as she watches me stretch out. No, 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 Hisao. You've got to hold it for longer than that. I'm trying. It kind of hurts a little. Ha! It's because you're out of shape. You've got to get some flexibility in you, like this. To demonstrate, Emmy reaches down and puts her head through her legs. That's... She's a fucking robot, man. That's not possible. God bless you, Emmy. I see. Is that the sort of thing I should strive for? Of course. Flexibility is important for any runner. You'll be able to go faster the more you stretch out. That makes no sense to me, but Emmy seems to believe it's true. With Emmy's help... I manage to stretch myself out properly. I can't help but notice that when she thinks about how to explain things to me, her mouth scrunches up in concentration. It's adorable. Not bad, Hisao. Come on, we better start running. We'll start off with just a mile, okay? That's four laps around the track, got it? Sounds fine to me. This shouldn't be too hard, right? Alright, so we'll actually end it here. I'm not totally in the middle of context. We are actually in morning run. No worries, I think. So we'll overwrite this save. Hopefully all is good there. But I do want to see something. So we'll go back to the main menu here. We'll go... Oh, shit. There's a little piece of paper right there. Damn, dude. But that's not what I wanted to see. I wanted to go to the library. Yes, so we have the little Emmy tab right there at the top. And there are many... Okay, maybe not many, but there's quite a few... Uh scenes or chapters or whatever the fuck that we have not encountered and for emmys there's a lot jesus christ that's uh that's gonna be a little interesting all right so we we got a long way to go for uh act two or at least all of emmys story and honestly uh, I said this in the beginning, but I really have no idea if I'm going to do another route. Because now I'm kind of interested in, in a few other characters, and I'm, I'm unsure if I should really go for it. Honestly, if I were to do another route, it would pretty much depend on 
if people were truly interested in it uh i don't know i'll have to i'll have to see and i'll have to see if i have anything going on after i'm done recording her route and pretty much finishing what i had planned to do for this playthrough i'll have to see if i have anything going on so i don't know i don't know if i'll do another route after this but i guess uh you have to stay tuned right <laughs> I, I, I guess I'll have to stay tuned to as well because I have no fucking idea. But thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more. I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.